Cool. So if everyone's able to see what I'm on here, uh, on here now with this first slide, the first point I want to make is that you need to make a study plan. Now, this is made assuming you have six weeks before your trials. But even if you only have four weeks, which it sounds like a lot of you do, you have four weeks or some have five, some might still have six. Basically, the way you want to think about making a study plan is to work backwards. Okay, that's the first key point. You want to work backwards. So you want to map out what you want to be doing each week before the trials. So let's say your exams are August 1st. What do you want to be doing one week before those exams? Well, all I would want to be doing is practicing adaptation, as in practicing question adaptation, doing new questions for my essays, looking at new craft of writing questions, and just practicing adapting your core responses. I would already want to have memorized my responses to the extent that I am going to memorize them. Some people don't like memorizing the full responses, the full core drafts. Um, personally, I used to do that. I would still recommend doing that. But regardless of how much you've memorized, once you've memorized everything you want to, in that week before trials, I want to make sure I'm at a stage where I know all of my responses. And then all I have to do is look at a lot of new questions and write lots of different responses to those questions. But I'm adapting my drafts while I'm doing that. So you definitely don't have to have more than one core draft for your essays. We'll talk about that, but one core draft for all of your essays. And then you want to be practicing adapting to as many different types of questions as possible. Now, the main thing I would be doing the week before your trials, again, I'm working backwards because that's how you have to think about it. A week out, I would want to be doing introductions and topic sentences mainly. So I wouldn't want to necessarily write full essays every time I look at a different question. So an absolutely key tip here that I would write down is that you want to be focusing on doing lots of introductions, again, adapting your core draft introduction and adapting your topic sentences. I would be focusing on those disproportionately. The reason for that is, as I said, is to be efficient. You want to focus on the things that matter most. And if you're writing out full essays every time, that's not very efficient. That's going to take a lot of time and that's going to take away time from studying for other important things. So I would occasionally write out full essays and practice adapting your evidence and how you explain your evidence to different essay questions. But the main thing that I would be doing is looking at different question types for your essays and craft of writing as well and practicing your introductions and topic sentences for the essay. And then you can practice, for instance, your first paragraph of your craft of writing, practice some part in the middle and some part at the end. So you don't necessarily have to keep writing out the full response the full composition that is. So it's important to focus on the things that matter most. And you all have to know that the introduction and topic sentences are the most important parts of your essay, because that's where the marker is basically going to decide what band you fall into. So if you have a great essay, apart from your introduction, because you have left your introduction to write on the day, because you thought that that's the way you do it. Oh, I, I don't know the question. So therefore I'm not going to draft an introduction and memorize it you're in big trouble because if that doesn't sound sophisticated and have flair, the market, that's the first thing the marker reads. So therefore, whether it's the right thing or not, there's going to be a certain level of bias there. And the marker is already mentally going to group you into a band after reading your introduction. So that means you definitely need to prepare a, a really nice, well-polished core introduction for all of your essays. And you also need to do a lot of practice at adapting those. But you'll find that the more you practice adapting introductions to different types of questions, the easier it will be to maintain those core pieces that you originally had in the draft, because you'll become more in tune with the parts of the sentences that need to be adapted. And you, can, you know where you can preserve your original piece. So that just takes practice. That's what I'm focusing on in that week before. I'm obviously going to do some section one practice as well in that week. Comprehension, the section one of, of the common mod, that reading task, that's what I mean by comp skills there, I want to be chipping away at that for a few weeks leading up to the exam. And I probably am just doing that in small doses throughout. So I just want to keep sharp. I want to be constantly practicing different types of questions and just getting really fast at writing those responses. Okay. So you want to be able to identify techniques really quickly. And you also want to be able to write a response really quickly because section one of paper one is the trickiest section in terms of timing. 
really hard to do it in that 45 minutes even though you're going to use the 10 minutes reading time on top of that it's still hard to do that in the 45 so you really need to be sharp with that i would be chipping away at that for a few weeks before the exams okay don't leave that to the last week any questions about that where can you find some um comprehension questions yeah good question i mean the first thing is i would be looking at past hsc questions Sometimes they don't show the section one text because they're kind of protected by copyright laws. So you'll see a note about copyright, but a lot of them do show the text or they at least say what the text is and you can then go search it up and do the questions. Um, the other one is online. There are uh, various past papers available. You'll be able to find uh, some sources. I'll even send through an email later. I have a link to a lot of trial papers that schools have used. So. You want to get access to trial past papers and HSE past papers and just be practicing those. So again, you can just go to the NESA website for the HSC past papers and you can even search up the texts that are protected by copyright. You can just go search them up yourself or you can Google online, find some past trial papers and use those. But again, I'll make a link available that, that takes you to some past English trial exams. Any other questions on that? Oh, I have one. So... um. I don't know, like for me, what I did was I found like the human experiences, it's always um always linked to like the idea of like challenges and kind of stuff like that. So like, I kind of made my my like essay kind of, I don't know if amb ambiguous is the right word, but like it can fit with like all these ideas of challenges because that's what I commonly see. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so in your, your questions about like preparing the draft, making it uh, a broad question. Yeah, like that, yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that approach is great. And if you're noticing that talking about the challenges of human experiences is a nice broad question that helps you adapt to any other possible question and you have to actually go and look at other questions and think what's the hardest possible question they could ask me here. And if you find that you're still able to adapt then that's a great practice question. And I think to your point, if I'm talking specifically about challenges, I think that's a nice key term to focus on because that will obviously be central to any text. There's going to be a complexity explored with respect to the human experience no matter what and every question is going to tie into some kind of problem some kind of challenge so uh challenges is a nice term glad you brought it up i think if if the question was you know is that a good approach i think yeah that's a great approach have a have a generic essay but still have an essay question people prepare drafts without an essay question that's not good because you want to at least have the base essay addressing one question so that you have a targeted you have a, a very deliberate response still you don't want to have some kind of fluffy generic thing that you think will just adapt to anything you still want to have structure and an argument throughout so i actually think you're better off having a broad question it can be broad um, use that for a draft and then make sure that the draft response actually answers that question so try not to be too generic and try to avoid not having an essay question to use for your core draft does that answer that or did you have another question there? Yeah, no, that was perfect. Awesome. So the week before we're doing adaptation, like I said, hopefully you've all noted down the main thing that you should be adapting for your essays. It is the introduction and the topic sentences. Just create word, uh, well, I was going to say create new word documents, but also you, you want to practice this in a handwritten way because it's a written exam. So once you have your core essay, once you have that memorized, and, we'll, and we're going to work backwards in a second towards how you do that, but what you then want to do is just write out intros and topic sentences to as many different types of questions as you can find. Okay, now going back more than a week before trials, so that is sooner, uh, that is sooner than later, you want to make sure you're actually memorizing those essays. And when you memorize them, you want to make sure that you're also practicing the adaptation at the same time. So what I mean by that is, say you've perfected your common module essay, You've perfected your common mod essay. You're happy with it. You can start memorizing it. Well, first of all, you'll see in the weeks before that you should have already timed it. Never memorize an essay that's too long. So we'll come back to that in a second. Never memorize an essay that's too long. Assume you're at that 32 minute mark. That's what we want our essays to be generally. Um, assume we're at the 32 minute mark there. You've memorized that. Once you've fully memorized it, before you move on to memorizing the next essay, so once you've done one of the essays or maybe it's your craft of writing composition, once you've memorized that, go and practice three questions, three new questions 
practice doing the intros and topic sentences at least. And probably I would do one full adaptation there. So notice that's in addition to the week before the before your exams. The week before your exams, you're doing heaps of intros and topic sentences and some full essays to practice. But in the weeks prior, I'm saying after you've just finished memorizing, make sure you quickly practice the adapt, adapt, adaptation process to at least three new questions before you move on to memorizing the next response. Is everyone clear on that? You might have the question, how do I actually memorize? Well, the way I do it, and I have videos on YouTube about this, if you just type in you know, how to memorize an essay, you'll probably find it. But basically I do it like a speech. So I print out a document that has my final essay there. Once I'm happy with that, I will start reciting it like a speech. And what I do is I say each line, one, one line at a time. I do one line at a time, start with the introduction and I will read it off the page and then I'll say it out loud. And until I can say it out loud without looking back at the page, uh, I won't move on to the next sentence. Okay, so it's basically like look, cover, write, check. If you all remember that kind of primary school learning technique, that's the same one I would use. So you print out the essay, you do paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence. And what you do is you read the first sentence, put the page down, don't look, say it out loud to yourself. And if you make a mistake, look back at the page, figure out where you made the mistake, Make sure you take note of that mentally and then try and do the full sentence again. And when you finally get that full sentence correct, you can then move on to trying to say the next sentence out loud. Okay, so once you can say the second sentence out loud perfectly without looking at the paper, then you say both sentences together. So you don't just keep doing one sentence, then the next, then the next. As soon as you can say the next sentence, you say everything all together so that you're constantly going back over the previous ones. Once you can say the full introduction out loud without looking, so you basically memorize the full intro, what you then want to do is write it out. So you kind of cement, you cement the knowledge there by writing it out at the end. So you do it like a speech, you're speaking it out, speaking it out, then you write it down once you can do the full paragraph and you repeat that for every paragraph of your essay. Now, why do I say do it like a speech? Because it's way more efficient. It's way faster. If you're just reading it and speaking it, you're going to be about eight times faster at the process. Now, people say, oh, well, you do remember things better when you write them down. That's true. That's why I still incorporate the written element there. After, you've after you can say the full paragraph out loud, I still write it out to kind of cement it in there because writing is a very effective way of remembering things. Any questions about that memorization approach? Okay. Now, remember the point I said earlier, don't memorize an essay that's too long. 40 minutes might be the time that you're given in paper two to write each essay, but 40 minutes is too long for your draft. Why, can someone tell me why 40 minutes is too long for your draft, even though you're given 40 minutes? You have to adapt to the question. Very good. So the rule of thumb that I use is that if it's 40 minutes, I want about eight minutes because that's 20% of the time. I want 20% of the time, I want eight minutes to spare. So I want to make sure that I can write my draft out at home. In, you can do it in exam conditions, but basically I would just print out the draft and then I'm going to look at it and write it out. Don't mem you, should, you don't have to have memorized it at this point. This is when you just think you've got the draft that you want. Before you start memorizing, you print it out and you just read off the page and write it out as fast as you can. If you can't write that in around 32 minutes, maybe you're pushing it to 34, 35 minutes for module A, or if you're a really slow writer. The reason why if you're a really slow writer, you might go up to 35 minutes is because you're just not going to be able to write enough to get the marks anyway. So you might have to budge there. But if you're a moderate to fast paced writer, then what I would recommend is aiming for 32 minutes. Module A, you might go up to 34 minutes. So I'm just going to show you here. Uh, I'll show you here ahead of time. Have a look at the minutes at the bottom of this particular slide. See, you get 40 minutes for each of those. But for Module A and Module B for those essays, I'm aiming for 34 minutes as a maximum for Module A. Why is that one a little bit longer? Because as you all probably know, it's a comparative study. You're looking at two texts, unless you're doing standard. If you're doing English standard, you probably still want to uh, hit the 32 minute mark. So anyone doing English standard who's here, 32 minutes for module A. If you're doing two texts in the essay, so if you're doing English advanced, then you want to do 34 minutes as a maximum. 
and then 32 minutes for module B. And if you look back at the common mod essay, again, even though you get 45 minutes, I'm treating it as if I get 40 minutes, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, and I still go for 32 there. So you can see you've almost got 13 minutes to spare on that one, but I'm treating the common module essay in terms of time, the same as the other modules. Why am I doing that? If I get 45 minutes for paper one for the essay in paper one, why am I treating it as though I get 40 minutes? To adapt to any um, issues you might find within the paper. Well, that's true, but how come I'm giving myself seemingly 13 minutes of leeway when here you can only see eight minutes for module B, for instance. Why am I still doing 32? Exactly. It's the same amount of marks. So th these are the little tricks that I really want you to note that even though the paper one gives you 45 minutes, don't be fooled. Treat it as though you're given 40 minutes and therefore prepare your draft to a 32 minute uh, kind of standard, right? So what can you do in 32 minutes? It should be the same rule because it's still 20 marks, basically the same criteria. It's the same expectations. But then you're asking, but what about those five extra minutes? Shouldn't I use that for the essay? No, you use it as leeway for section one because section one is all unseen. It's very likely that you might need a couple of extra minutes at the end. So I would treat the common mod essay as being 40 minutes and the section one as being 50 minutes plus you get the 10 minutes reading time to spend on section one. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay, that's a really important part of the strategy here. Do not use the 10 minutes reading time to look too much at the common module essay. You need to use that reading time to, to prepare for section one and you must do section one first, not do the essay first in paper one. Okay, now in terms of drafting, editing, okay, well, the next few weeks, and I, especially I, I should just say the next two weeks, because you've got holidays for the next two weeks, what I would be focusing on, this is the key focus, is finishing all of your drafts, actually changing them up. Someone had the question about, oh, I did a multimodal, I now need to make that a normal essay. How do you do that? Well, you need to grab all the material from your multimodal and then just put it into your standard essay framework. Okay, so um, who did ask that question? It was about module A. That was me. Yep. So uh, what text are you doing as an example here? So I was doing King Richard III and looking for Richard. Great. So are you going to the multimodal? Hopefully wasn't too far away from a spoken essay. Am I correct in saying that? Um, a little bit different because I decided to do some uh, like an interview between Shakespeare and Pacino as sort of. Uh, okay. And, Interesting. But I I did utilize a lot of um, techniques like film techniques and dramatic techniques. Great. So you need to restructure that into an essay format. Now that you can do either three body paragraphs or four body paragraphs for that one. So for anyone doing English advanced module A, because there are two texts, it's possible to do four paragraphs where the first paragraph looks at the first text, the second paragraph looks at the next text, and then you go back to the first text, then back to the second text and you kind of split your essay up into two ideas. So you have two ideas and you talk about each text with respect to that idea and you can compare them that way. Um, you can also do a three body paragraph one where you talk about both texts in each paragraph. Okay, but that's much more difficult. But if you are up to that and, and you prefer that way of thinking about it where you have three ideas and you talk about each text within and you compare them within, that's also a great structure to use. So you just need to go and approach that like an essay. Um, to your point, what was your name? Sorry, uh, whoever asked that. Isaac. So it's a great question, Isaac. So does that make sense? You just need to go back, create an essay scaffold, introduction, three or four body paragraphs, a conclusion, figure out how you're going to order your ideas, first of all. So guys, if you're going to revisit your essay drafts, you always start with the topic sentences to figure out how your ideas move forward. Once you figure that out, uh, like Isaac, for instance, figure out all the techniques and the concepts that are applicable in, um, to your essay. Find a practice question, of course, always have a practice question, use a nice generic one, as we said, if possible, and then figure out where you wanna slot in all of that evidence that you talked about in your multimodal. And then you might need to go and get some more evidence as well. Does that make sense? Sounds good. Awesome. And now a lot of people did a multimodal for the common mod. So whether you're doing standard, English standard or English advanced, 
Did a lot of people do a multimodal for their common module? Yeah, I did a feature article for a common module. Great. Other people? Yeah, I did as well. Yep. Okay. Great. So what you need to do is first of all, you need to get rid of the related text. Hopefully everyone knows that. No related text for your common module essay now. No related text. No related text anymore in the exams. You just used it for that assessment. That means that a lot of you will currently have some kind of draft that also has a second text in it. So you might have the crucible or 1984, but then you also have some other text that you were asked to talk about in your multimodal. Now you need to get rid of that and you need to make it into a three body paragraph essay. So you might need to actually find some more evidence and rethink that structure that you've currently got because your current structure might only account for one idea from the text, but you actually need three ideas to have three body paragraphs. So that should be an absolute priority for all of you in attendance here. Get that common module up to date. So you now to need to make a three body paragraph structure, which means you might need to look back at it, get the evidence that you need to have those three ideas and then go from there. Okay, but you're removing the related text, finding a draft essay question, and then building the three body paragraph structure. If now, you, yep. Uh, if you didn't do well in one assessment task, like it was like a um, King Richard essay, mm -hmm. then would you have to rewrite the whole thing or just apply the feedback? Like, Yeah, it's a good question. I think apply the feedback first. If it was like a disaster and they said, oh, you need, if they said, oh, you should completely rewrite this, then obviously do that. But they often won't say it in those, those terms. Um, if there's just a lot wrong with it, you, you definitely do want to revisit the, the general structure. But how I would start is I would be looking at your topic sentences, first of all, and think, okay, did, what kind of feedback did they give me about my ideas? because you might need to tweak those. And if you need to tweak your ideas and your, the focus of each of your body paragraphs, then you might need to go and get different pieces of evidence. But I would say, even if you got like a 10 to 13 or 14 out of 20, let's say you got 10 out of 20, it doesn't mean that you need to change everything around. Again, what the first thing I would be looking at is, do my topic sentences have ideas that kind of go forward? Do I have a progression in my essay? Right. So am I starting, for instance, talking about a problem and then I'm talking about a possible resolution or something like that? Or I'm talking about a problem that both texts explore and then I'm talking about a consequence or something like that. So first of all, figure out whether your argument's going forward because you may need to change your topic sentences and the focus of your essay in that respect. And then I would be re-looking at your evidence and making sure that you, are, have, you have good analysis for each of those. And that's where you can take into account the feedback. Um, so it's going to depend what the feedback's about. If it's about the actual ideas of your response, then yes, you do want to rethink the actual argument you're making as a whole. Otherwise, I would just be looking at the individual sentences, starting with topic sentences and then your analysis and figuring out how you can improve those based on the feedback. All good. Okay, so that's the general approach. That In the next couple of weeks, again, if I was you, I would be this is for everyone, I would be updating the common mod essay, remove the related, make sure you've got at least a three body paragraph essay there. Again, we're aiming for 32 minutes in the draft. So once you think you've finished perfecting that essay, time it straight away. Don't start learning it. Only start learning it after you've timed it. The best students in the state all time their essays and they all have time to spare because you need that eight minute buffer to be relaxed on the day so you don't feel compelled to just regurgitate the essay, first of all. And then you know that you have time to think about the question and adapt your sentences throughout, okay? The better you learn your essays, the faster you'll be at adapting it because you'll know the exact spots to adapt, okay? The better you learn your essays, the less likely you are to regurgitate, ironically. Okay, that's because you'll feel more confident with those sentences and you'll all your mental focus, all of your attention on the day is going to be on answering that question and tweaking those sentences. Okay, so next couple of weeks, common mod essay and any of the other essays where, you know, unless you got full marks and you're really happy with them, I would be looking back at them and applying any feedback you got from your assessments, improving them, get teacher feedback, get peer feedback. So if you can uh, kind of partner up with someone else from your 
class, or especially if you can get someone who is right at the top of your year, if you can ask them for some advice or feedback on like a paragraph or your essay, and then you can, you know, you have to reciprocate the favor, of course, and you can say, I'm happy to look at anything that you have. Um, if you can get into those kind of like little partnerships or groups, study groups, where you're exchanging essays, then you'll probably go a lot better as well, because other people are going to be able to identify potential flaws in your essay. And of course, the teacher, your teachers should be able to give you some good feedback as well. So that, that's all what you need to be doing the next couple of weeks. Drafting, polishing, make sure you're happy with those drafts. And then it's all about time it out, cut down the essay if it's too long, if it's beyond the 32 minutes or 34 minutes, you need to then just be relentless with how much you cut out from those drafts. Sometimes you'll have evidence that you really want to keep that you just can't afford to because it's too long. So you need to cut those out. Make sure your conclusions aren't too long. When you're cutting down your essays, don't cut out heaps from your body paragraphs and then leave a massive conclusion. Your conclusion can be one to two sentences theoretically, and you could still get full marks. The most important things in the essay, as I said, are the introductions, the topic sentences, and then you want to have really sophisticated analysis, okay, that actually supports those points. The conclusion needs to be there, but it's not the most important part. It's the least important paragraph. Therefore, even if you only have two sentences for your draft conclusions, that's fine. And if you're running short on the day, even if you just can get a one sentence conclusion out, you could still theoretically get full marks with that. But I would aim for two as a base, but that, that's where you can probably cut down words already. Any questions about that? Okay, cool. So what you want to do, we're in the holidays now, you can see week one, week two, again, you might only have four weeks now. So just apply that accordingly. But I pulled up an example for all of you to see, you want to have two subjects a day that you're focusing on. So from today, going forward for the rest of the holidays, and then even when you go back to school, and you have to study after school, I would be focusing on a maximum of two subjects. If you focus on more than two subjects in one day, that's a lot of chopping and changing. There's a lot of inertia in built into that because you're having to switch from one subject to another. You're going to lose time. You're going to take time to warm up into the new subject. So I think the most efficient thing to do is just to try and study really deeply two subjects and just have a big, have a decent sized break between those. So for instance, you might do a maths pass paper one morning. That might take up to three hours. You should mark that see where you got things wrong, make sure you understand how to correct it. Okay, great. I'm done with that session. Now I'm going to have an hour break. Now I'm going to do another three hours on English, or now I'm going to do three hours on modern history. And I'm going to do my notes there. That targeted approach where you just do three hours on two subjects, uh, that's going to be a lot more effective than doing, I think, three subjects for two hours. Okay, so depth over breadth there. Um, I feel like that's a much better way of doing it. In terms of how much you should do English, have a look at the last week, theoretically week six. But for some of you, that will be week four. So even though it says week six, that's going to be week four for some of you. English doesn't have to be every day there. That's probably a little bit over the top. But basically, uh, the, those days represent Sunday, Saturday, you know, Monday through Sunday. Basically, this, that's why there's seven rows. Now, notice the bottom right-hand corner. Why is that just English? The bottom right-hand box. Why is that just English? Because the first um, assessment trials and HSC is always English. That's right. So, so that's why English is so um, heavy. It's so, it's so kind of compressed into that final week because you want to be freshest on the things that you are being examined on first, correct? Like whatever you're going to be examined on in the third week of your exams, like if you have a three-week exam block or even a two-week, whatever's in the second week or the last week, they're the things that I would be studying for more at the start. So I would be doing those early now, getting all your notes together, doing practices, because as you get closer and closer to the first week of your exams, you only want to be looking at the things that are in that first week. So make sure that you've studied up for everything towards the end of your exam block earlier. Does ever, that, that's the key tip there. I would study for things that are later in the exam block earlier now. Get, get all of that set and then gradually ease into studying just for the things that are in your first week. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily do English every day in that final week, 
Um, but realistically, even if it was just like looking at it at night or going over your essays or doing a couple of intros, I would probably be touching it in some way every day in that final week. Okay. And again, you have school that week. You have school the week before your exam. So this is what I'm doing after school, to be clear. All right. Now, in terms of what you're doing for English, as I said, in that final week, you're just doing adaptation. You're doing lots of introductions and topic sentences. You're doing some full essays, but that takes a long time, obviously. And you're doing some comp skills and practicing your the craft of writing in the same way, doing some practice adaptations, making sure you really know those responses well, but you should have memorized them by that final week. All right, any questions about that general approach? Or is there anything in the table there? Should... Yep. Oh, sorry. Um, how long should we be spending like, you said like, oh, yeah, just focus on topic sentences and um, introduction. How long should we like set aside for that? That might be a, a two hour block. So, so it's a good question. Uh, when, when you guys go back to school, it depends how well you want to go, basically, in terms of how long you should be spending on it. Um, if you're going for top marks here, if, you're, if you really want to go well, if you're trying to get a high ATAR and you're trying, or just if you're trying to push yourself, you're just trying to go as well as you can. It doesn't mean you think you're going to get a 99 ATAR or anything like that. Just if you're trying to do really well, I would be spending, you know, one to two hours in those on those uh, evenings after school on doing those adaptations, because I feel like if you're just doing intros and topic sentences, you can actually get quite a bit done in one to two hours. Okay, so up to two hours. And I'm, the reason I'm saying up to two hours there is because you probably also want to be looking at another subject as well, because you obviously have other exams to worry about. So one to two hours um, when you're just doing the adaptation part, you might have to spend a lot longer on English in the next two weeks to make sure you get those drafts done. You might be doing three hour blocks on English, not every day, but you might be doing three hour blocks. As you can see in the diagram here, you might be doing it every second day. You're going back there and you're trying to finish those drafts. You might even have one day where you just do English and you just like, I'm just going to knock out my essays. I'm going to finish them. I actually really like that approach. I think the sooner you get those drafts done, even if it's really painful, which it probably will be um, just to sit down and do English all day. I'd actually think that's a, a great approach because you're knocking that out early and you're on track to refine your essays, get the feedback um, early on in that process. And then you can move to adapting, memorizing, timing it out, of course, before that. So I think the sooner you guys get that those drafts done, um, the better for English. Does that answer your question? What was that, sorry? Well, for the adaptations every day, like on the last week, do you do like mod A, mod B and mod C? Like, do you do it all together or do you just- Yeah, it's a good question. So on the, this is really important, everyone. So on the day before your first English exam, which will be paper one, ever, hopefully you all know you have two days of English exams. You have paper one, then paper two. On the Sunday, which I'm assuming is the day before your exam on Monday, I would only be doing paper one study. So I would be doing uh, comprehension practice, making sure I'm sharp on those, practicing some different answers, looking over all the different types of techniques, practice spotting those. And then I would also be doing lots of adaptation just for my common module essay. So uh, for your question there, Gloria, we basically want to de decide on what we're focusing on, depending on what's next. So on the Sunday, I'm just looking at paper one. So it's just common module ones. The Saturday, I'm only looking at paper two. So now you can do your mod A, mod B essay adaptations, and you can also do module C adaptations. Now I'm looking at just paper two on the Saturday. So I'm still fresh for it on the Tuesday. Does that make sense? But obviously the day before paper one, I only want to be looking at paper one. Two days before I can look at paper two. So I'm still fresh on that. Then before, earlier in the week, you can just alternate. So I would alternate between paper one and paper two in terms of adaptation practice. So each day you can go paper, paper one, then next day, paper two, and so forth. Any other questions about that? All good? Okay. So just remember paper one, which is going to be the first day of your exams, just has two sections. They're going to give you an hour and a half, but they're also going to give you an extra 10 minutes of reading time. Now, the biggest mistake that I've seen people make here is they read the text during reading time and then they go and do the essay first. That is a grave mistake because you are obviously then going to have to re-familiarize yourself with those texts later to do section one second 
and you're going to lose so much time. You're going to use another 10 minutes of reading time, except it's going to be in writing time. So make sure after you've read the texts, you've now looked at them, you go and answer those questions straight away. Now, why do you guys think, and maybe maybe uh, we've got a few people here who would do this. I hope you don't do it after me saying this, but why do you think people go and do the essay first in paper one, even though you get 10 minutes reading time to spend preparing for section one? That's all right. So whoever spoke first there, and then I'll, I'll hear from both of you. Just yeah. say your name. Yep, go for it. Oh, okay. Um, isn't it because that that way you know if you're um hitting the time mark that you were trying to hit in your drafting process and memorization process uh it's it might be loosely tied to that but there's a more direct reason it kind of links to what you're saying there uh, what was the other answer yeah exactly exactly it, it there's actually two parts to it right so you'll be tempted to do your essay first so you don't forget it but are you really going to forget it if you do 40 minutes of something else before it, like how, why is it that fragile in your memory that you might forget it if you don't write it straight away? That must have, that must mean you've just been learning it like an hour prior, you're still learning it. That's too late to be learning it. Didn't we say you want to have memorized the essays more than a week, more than a week before that day? So now realistically, some of you here are still going to be memorizing your essays the night before this exam. And maybe as you're alluding to there in your answer, um, you will be memorizing the essay that morning. Now that is not a good spot to be in. I don't want to be in that spot, but I'm being realistic. Some of you will be there and you'll be very stressed and you'll be trying to remember it the night before. Fine, that, that's uh, maybe doing it a week in advance is too idealistic. That, that could be the case. So just do it as soon as you can. Um, but even if you're learning the night before, I think you've got to go in with what you know at that point. Um, it's not going to make a difference you know, whether you start right then or you start 40 minutes later, it's not going to make a massive difference. If there are a couple of words you're afraid of forgetting, why don't you just write them down on the page straight away? Um, you should know some trigger words that maybe can trigger your memory. Maybe write those down straight away. But what's the problem with doing the essay first? As I said, is you're going to need to reread those texts for section one. And what happens is people who nail their essays, and, and this is the other reason, people are more comfortable writing the essays. There's a sense of comfort and security in it, right? Oh, I've done a pre-prepared essay. I'm really happy with it. I know I can just tweak it to this new question and I'm good. Well, because you, you'll likely be quite stressed, you'll be tempted to write that first. But what I've seen happen is I had a student get 20 out of 20 in the essay. They got 20 out of 20, 100%, full marks in the essay. And then I said, they said, oh, I did it first. And I said, why did you do the essay first? And they said, oh, because, you know, I, I, felt, comf I felt really confident with it. Like I felt like I was going to nail it. I'm like, that's great. Why didn't you nail it after doing section one? Because what happened was they got full marks for the common mod essay. And then they only got 10 out of 20 for section one because they didn't finish half the paper. They ran out of time. That will happen. I guarantee you it's happened. I've seen it time and time again. So even if you're really confident with the essay or you're afraid of not remembering things for the essay, if you do the essay first, you will likely run out of time in the exam and it will all be offset. But any benefit of doing the essay first will be more than offset by the fact that you're not going to finish the section one paper and you might lose more than half the marks just because you weren't able to attempt them in the time. So please don't make that, that fatal error of doing the essay first in paper one. Okay, hopefully that convinces you. Uh, I've seen the students try and still do it and it just, it, it, I've never really seen it work out well for anyone. Um, so I think you're better off doing section one first. 32 minutes for that common mod essay, 32 minutes for your other essays. As I said, module A, for anyone who's doing English advanced here, you can push that to 34 minutes for your draft. To hammer in the point again, don't memorize your essays until you have timed them. Time your essays before you memorize them because if you time them and you realize your essay is 40 minutes to write out, your draft is 40 minutes, that's too long. You need to now cut it down so it only takes you 32 or 34 for um, advanced module A people. Okay, what's the other thing you notice about on this slide that's interesting? Module C. Module C, you get 40 minutes as well and it's also worth 20 marks. But... Here's, here's the real pro tip here. If you can do that, if you can do the whole module C in less than 30 minutes, then you're in a really good spot. Okay, now why am I saying do module C in less than 30? Why, like, why am I not as concerned about writing more and taking longer? 
There's the reflection. Well, there's a reflection and that's going to take time. But what about the composition? I mean, what it should, it's 20 marks. Why wouldn't I need the same amount of time? Necessarily. You, you might take a similar amount of time, but why might that one be the one to try and even do in less time when you're preparing? Because you need like, you need to like, you need purpose of your piece. Like that relates specifically to the stimulus given. Uh, so you're saying like, oh, you've got to factor in more time for the adaptation. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, because like you need to know what you want to write in the reflection that like specifically links to it. Yeah, th there is more potentially more adaptation needed. The, the thing that I'm actually looking for here is in module C with your compositions, they will typically not require as many words to get full marks. So you can have a shorter module C composition than you would if you were to write the equivalent of an essay. With module C, if you're doing a persuasive, discursive or imaginative composition, and you'll be doing one of those, okay? You, you'll at least be doing one of those in the composition part of that paper for module C, the craft of writing. When you're doing your composition, does the marker know if you didn't write everything you wanted to write? They don't know. What about with an essay? Would it be pretty obvious if you didn't finish? Because you won't have, you likely won't have. Exactly. They'll know you didn't finish. They'll see it structurally. They'll say, where's the conclusion? Or they'll say, oh, half of it, you only wrote half of that body paragraph. And then you have a half a sentence, you have half a sentence as a conclusion. So it's very obvious to the marker that you haven't satisfied the structural requirements of the essay because you in fact haven't. But with module C, with the composition, because you're writing creatively, there is no set structure that a marker is expecting. Does that make sense to everyone? So you can actually finish the way earlier than you wanted to because you were running out of time and you can still get full marks. So my point is you can get full marks writing a lot less in module C. So that, that has two implications. The first is definitely do module C last. I would recommend doing paper two in order. I recommend doing the whole exam in order. I don't think there's any kind of sneaky tactic of doing one section before another. I would definitely do module C last because what happens, someone answered this, why do module C last based on what I just said? If the market doesn't know where you meant to finish your piece, therefore you can write less and still get full marks. Why does that make sense to do it last? If you In case are... you go a little bit over time. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And who else was speaking there? Was that Gloria? Oh, uh, um... yeah. Go, 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 hey, you Gloria. Go, you go. Oh, because if you run out of time, you can't, the marker couldn't tell if you don't or not. Yeah, exactly. If you had to cut it short. Now, why might you have to cut it short? Because module A and module B might have taken more time than you wanted. Does everyone understand that? If you took too much time on module A and module B, which we'll try to avoid, but it may happen. We're trying to avoid it by having those shorter drafts. Okay, this is all about strategy. Make sure those drafts aren't exceeding those time limits there, 34 minutes, 32. But if you do go a little bit over because you got a really hard question and you had to spend more time thinking about it, which is not a bad thing. It's good if you're thinking about the question and trying to adapt it. With module C, let's say you've only got 30 minutes left on the clock that's actually not, that's fine. You want to be in a good spot where you're like, oh, I don't need the full 40. So if I can do my drafts in less than 30 and I have like kind of a, an emergency kind of finish point where, okay, I'm not going to be able to write everything I wanted to here, including the adaptations, but I can chop out the last two or three body, par or, or no, I shouldn't say body paragraphs, but I can chop out like maybe a quarter of my response that I wanted to write. Well, that's great. You can chop it out. You can still go really well. And then you can do potentially even a slightly shorter reflection as well and still get full marks. So the idea is you can still get full marks in module C with a lot less time allocated. So therefore do module C last because if you're running short on time, it meant you spent more time on those essays. Hopefully you finished them and then you can afford to lose a bit on mod C. Okay. Don't, don't like plant, don't make that happen just because I've said that. Like it's ideal that you have the 40 minutes left for mod module C. I'm just saying worst case scenario, I would want to be finishing with mod C versus an essay. Because if I only had 30 minutes left on for a module B essay and I was doing that last, I'd be quite stressed because I'm like, well, it takes me 32 minutes to do my draft. 
So now I'm going to have to cut out heaps. So you don't want to be in that situation. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go into section one, just go through a few tips and strategies. Um, does any, does anyone want a like three minute break here? Just, just say now if, if anyone does want it, otherwise I'm going to continue and we'll have a break after this section.